Dr. Sachs, is it true that you have been able to see your own brain in real time, uh, ex accepting music and seeing parts of your brain light up when you listen to music? Um, yes, I did see that. All right. Well, we want to know all about that. Tell it. What, what happened? Um, and what did you notice? Right. Um, well, I um, uh, I was asked what music I particularly liked, so of course I, I said Bach. Um, <laughs> and um, we knew that. Uh, a, um, a particular section was played from the Bach Mass in B minor, and what seemed to be uh, a somewhat similar section from the Beethoven Missa Solemnis. And, um, uh, and when this was done, my brain lit up all over with the Bach, and it, uh, and, and it showed no change, whatever, with the Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? Guess what? There happens to be a clip of just this, and this is from PBS's Nova. So we're going to get to watch what you just told us about. The well-known writer and neurologist Oliver Sacks is exploring the idea of how the brain reacts to music. He is trying to figure out why some brains can't decode music at all, while others are sensitive to the slightest musical nuance. In general, I'm a Bach lover and have always been, you know, even when I was a, uh, uh, a kid when I was five, I'm told that I was asked what my favorite things in the world were, and I said smoked salmon and Bach. Mm. <laughs> and 70 years later, it's still pretty much the same. In his quest, Dr. Sachs is offering himself up as a test subject. A team of neuroscientists at Columbia University have designed a test that will reveal if the brain of Dr. Sachs loves Bach as much as he does. And roll back and forth. Hal Hinkle gives Dr. Sachs a device to rate his emotions, while at the same time, a scan will record the activity of his brain. He'll hear two pieces of music, one by Bach and one by Beethoven. First the Bach, then the Beethoven. The composers are different, but the music shares certain qualities. Oliver, that completes the first emotional scan. I would like to hear how that was for you. The, uh, the Bach sort of blew me away, uh, especially that point where the soprano came in and there was a wonderful harmonic modulation. Uh, but the Beethoven and the Fates sort of left me flat. The results of the scan amazingly seem to confirm his feelings. What you can see just in an immediate uh, overview here is that this is your Bach brain and this is your Beethoven brain. Sorry, Ludwig. Yeah, sorry, Ludwig. <laughs> There's not much there. what you see in that. I mean, the thing that strikes me is what you said. It's all over his whole brain. But, but interpret that for us. Yeah, so I think it speaks to that strong engagement when you're listening to a piece of music that has that uh, strong personal uh, salience and is perhaps evoking those memories. Um, you really see many of those regions lighting up. So in that case, the cerebellum, uh, prefrontal cortex, temporal lobes. I mean really all over it, it speaks to that strongly. Well, that you're, you're looking at both emotion, but also, are you looking at memory? He's remembering from his child, I mean, what association? Well, I, I don't know, perhaps yeah. Dr. Sachs can yeah. speak to what he was thinking about in the scanner there uh, when hearing the box. But sometimes memories, you're not thinking memories. You're, they, That's right? true, it's, they, it's, they just come upon you, right? And it's, it's sort of that movie in your mind, right? The mental movie. Did it evoke, do you remember if it, it was evoking memories or were you just letting it wash over you? Um, it may have been evoking past performances, but mostly I was, uh, I was just wrapped. Yeah. 